A U.S. official told CBS News Russian forces have moved rocket launchers and long-range artillery into possible firing positions. But the new information heavily conflicts with the Kremlin's latest announcement that it's pulling back troops in its southern and western districts and wants to continue diplomatic negotiations. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Moscow today. The pair discussed Russians' main demands, which is to keep Ukraine from joining NATO and to scale back NATO troops in Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, Ukraine officials are reporting a possible cyber attack on its defense ministry's website. CBS News' Skylar Henry has the latest. Russia's defense minister announced its forces near the border with Ukraine will march home as soon as its large-scale military exercises are over. It strains credulity to think that they would have this many troops uh, arrayed along the border with Ukraine and in Bel and Belarus simply for winter exercises. The Russian military released this video. It says shows tank units heading home. And President Vladimir Putin told German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he's ready to negotiate with NATO and the U.S. There are signs from Moscow that uh, diplomacy should continue. This gives grounds for cautious optimism. But so far, we have not seen any sign of de-escalation on the ground. These satellite images show a deployment of a new helicopter squadron and soldiers to Belgorod, Russia, just 24 miles from the border with Ukraine. And a U.S. official tells CBS News that Russia has now moved rocket launchers and long-range artillery into firing positions. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with his Russian counterpart today, and President Biden talked with French President Emmanuel Macron. But the U.S. believes a Russian attack is much more likely than its European allies do. The thing that causes the concern is the just mass array of forces uh, around Ukraine, particularly in Belarus near Kyiv. There's still a good bit of difference between how the U.S. perceives that and the way, for example, our European allies do. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin left Washington this morning to hold talks with NATO allies in Belgium. He'll also visit with U.S. troops deployed to Lithuania and Poland during his European trip. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Joining us with more from Kyiv, Ukraine, is CBS News reporter Haley Ott. Hi, Haley. So the Russians are saying they've pulled back troops. But we have new images, of course, showing that the troops have actually been moved into possible attack positions. So what is actually going on with all the developments in the last 24 hours? Has the tone actually changed around Ukraine? That's a great question. Officials here are saying that they want to see evidence of any de-escalation. They say that that would obviously be welcome, but they're accustomed to Russia saying one thing and then doing another. And we're hearing that from officials here. We're, we're hearing that from the Secretary General of NATO. Um, but it's important to stress that the mood, at least here where I am in Kyiv, is cautious optimism. The discourse recently about um, diplomacy, both both from the Russian side and obviously from NATO, um, has really uh, made people here hopeful and optimistic that maybe they're out, they're coming out the other end of sort of the most dangerous part of this crisis. But obviously, um, that remains to be seen. As we mentioned earlier, just moments ago, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz met with Putin in Moscow today. How uh, do you think the economic ties between the two countries sort of complicate Western efforts to punish Russia if, if an invasion were to happen? So one of the biggest concerns um, for some people watching these tensions unfold were Germany's ties to Russia in the form of this gas pipeline that they've been working on for years. They've poured a ton of money into this Nord Stream 2 pipeline that could set to be activated in just a matter of months. And it is really important to Germany. It's an important part of their energy future. They get a lot of their gas from Russia. So there was concern initially that maybe Germany would be hesitant to um, speak out against Russian actions in Ukraine out of fear of perhaps jeopardizing this project. But um, what we've seen recently is that President Biden said that if 
if Russia makes any move into Ukraine, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline would be scrapped. And while Germany, um, while the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz didn't name Nord Stream 2 exactly, he did say that he supports President Biden and that their response would be unified. Um, there were concerns as these tensions sort of began to unfold that perhaps uh, they would challenge the relationships between NATO countries and sort of reveal a weakness in the alliance. But as diplomacy continues, as um, the conversations between NATO allies and between Russia continue, I think some of those fears um, have, begin, have begun to be abated. All right, Haley Ott reporting from Kiev for us today. Thank you.